Oh, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, people. I'm here again today. I was hoping to be here yesterday, but I couldn't make it. Guys, have a lot of things going on. I'm sure a lot of you have things going on as well. The devil is knocking at the doors of God's people, and we have to just keep praying and watching and being encouraged in him. Today I'm going to be talking about news that we did need to just go over some news briefly. Uh, I have Stephen and Noon and um, Debu 77, uh, BP Earth Watch, and some other news to show uh, about what's going on, catching up with the news. Um, I'm going to be going over um, Psalms 10 today. Psalms 10. Uh, and then we're going to get into the Bible, uh, Psalms 10. And I'm also going to be talking about uh, it's a book I want to show you guys about spiritual warfare. I know a lot of you have probably heard of the one called um, Pigs in Apollo, and that's another good book uh, if you can find it at Amazon. But we need to be really using spiritual warfare at this time more than ever. Uh, so I'm going to show another book to you at another time uh, later on. But let's go ahead and get on through this video. Uh, fair use notice in front of you. Um, <clears throat> Wow, we have more snow coming to Colorado here uh, in a few. Um, we're going to have some more snow coming in tonight and Sunday and Monday. So it's kind of just going to be a cold weekend. Uh, I really appreciate the prayers for my family member. Uh, I really appreciate each and every one of you praying. Uh, she's in a safe place and doing pretty good right now, but we need continuous prayer for her uh to be safe okay until she get her uh, apartment and stuff like that so we thank you for the prayers really appreciate you uh i'm gonna go on over here now and get into uh a song and then i will come back and show some news here from uh israel 7 news and some other news uh going on with russia and things escalating so uh let me go ahead now and get a song here um the song I want here, I had it here. Hold on a minute. That's not it. <laughs> yeah, here's a song here from uh, Zima Lavav. I love this song so much. So let's go ahead and play uh, Yeshua by Zima Lavav. Zima Lavav. And I enjoy it. And hope you guys having a wonderful Shabbat, Shabbat. Did I put my Shabbat thing up? <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, okay? So I really hope you guys enjoying your Shabbat, okay? So let me go ahead and mute this out.
what purpose have I? I live only to praise you, Yeshua, Yeshua. Seven Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Hello and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Ahead of an imminent revival of a watered-down version of the 2015 nuclear agreement with Iran, U.S. Central Command Commander General Kenneth McKenzie visits Israel reaffirm Washington's commitment to uphold its pledge that Iran will not have nuclear weapons. IDF officials urged the political establishment in Jerusalem to keep a low profile in the tug of war between world powers vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine amid concerns over possible ramifications for Syria. Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog proclaims Jerusalem, Athens and Nicosia to be anchors of stability within a stormy region. Outgoing commander of the U.S. Central Command, General Kenneth McKenzie, concluded a two-day visit to Israel this morning after a string of high-level meetings that focused on Washington's efforts to alleviate Jerusalem's concerns regarding a Luma revival of the 2015 nuclear agreement with the Islamic Republic of Iran. General McKenzie, who visited Israel as the guest of IDF Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi, also met with Defense Minister Benny Gantz 
during which discussions were held regarding the latest developments in the region, with chief focus on the Iranian challenge and the ramifications of the war in Ukraine. These topics were also subsequently discussed during a meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, who emphasized the dangers in signing a new nuclear agreement with Iran. In response, the outgoing CENTCOM commander clarified to his interlocutors that the United States would uphold its pledge that Iran will not have nuclear weapons. Meanwhile, senior officials in Jerusalem voiced their frustrations over the agreement that is taking shape in the Austrian capital, Vienna, which they assert to be a very bad deal for Israel. Consequently, in a phone conversation with International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett emphasized Israel's position regarding the nuclear talks in Vienna, as well as the situation regarding the open cases in the IAEA that deal with the Iranian weapons program. The Israeli leader further stressed Jerusalem's expectation that the IAEA will act as a professional and impartial supervisory body at a time when the United States, Russia, China, France, Britain and Germany, commonly referred to as the P5 plus 1, are holding political deliberations on the IAEA's mandate, which may, if Tehran's demands are met, limit its professional capacity to guarantee the Islamic Republic's nuclear program's civilian nature. It is important to know that the IAEA Director General traveled to Tehran for a working visit this evening to try and find common ground on a way forward regarding outstanding issues. I am still, of course, um, going to uh, visit uh, Tehran on this very important uh, uh, official visit to try to address uh, issues that we have discussed on, on different uh, occasions. While the IAEA Director General's past meetings in Tehran had seemingly failed to produce any tangible results regarding outstanding issues, Russia's ambassador, Mikhail Ulyanov, who is Moscow's chief negotiator of the talks in Vienna, voiced confidence that the next meetings of Grossi and his Iranian counterpart have good chances to come to an agreement, which could then reflect positively in the next IAEA Board of Governors meeting. Now I believe uh, they have good chances to come to an agreement and I hope that the next report of uh, Rafael Grossi after his return from Tehran, report to the Board of Governors will be positive. I hope so. I am talking about my hope. Asked whether there was a possibility for the nuclear talks to actually collapse, Ambassador Ulyanov said the following. I don't think so. I cannot imagine that at this stage the talks may collapse. It would be ex absolutely irresponsible, especially at this stage when we are actually on the finish line. Similar to the culmination of talks in 2015, when the P5 plus 1 held a ministerial meeting with their Iranian counterpart to mark the adoption of a nuclear agreement, Ambassador Ulyanov noted that a ministerial meeting will take place in the near future. However, outstanding issues must first get resolved. I believe ministerial meeting will take place. Will but, take place. But, but uh, regarding the date, I believe it's uh, not yet finally decided. Uh -huh. It may be Saturday, it may be Sunday, uh -huh. it may be Monday, who knows? Uh, mm -hmm. Because. Uh, there are some things which need uh, to be finalized before the ministerial meeting. Uh, the, those outstanding issues are relatively, relatively small in comparison with the whole package, but they are not settled, are not yet settled. So let's see. But uh, I can confirm that uh, we are very, very close to the finish line. In spite of the optimism voiced by the Russian ambassador, Iranian Foreign Minister Hassan Amir Abdullahian asserted in a phone conversation with EU Foreign Policy Chief Josep Borrell this morning that the West's haste to reach an agreement cannot prevent the observance of Iran's red lines, as he put it, which include Tehran's unrealistic demands of guarantees. 
With that being said, the Ayatollah regime's top diplomat stressed that his delegation will continue to work hard to reach a final and good agreement that ensures the interests of the Islamic Republic. It is important to highlight that among two other outstanding issues, the Ayatollah regime demands that the United States removes the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps from its designation list of terror entities, despite its direct support for terror-related activities throughout the Middle East, including in Yemen, Iraq, Syria and Lebanon. Meanwhile, a Russian defense delegation is scheduled to visit Israel next week on Thursday as part of monthly meetings focused on the Israeli-Russian deconfliction mechanism for the Syrian theater, where the IDF operates regularly against Iranian entrenchment and smuggling of sophisticated weaponry. In light of the complex reality in Syria and the necessity to avoid miscalculation between Israeli and Russian forces operating in the same volatile war zones, IDF officials have repeatedly called on the political echelon in Jerusalem to keep a low profile in the tug of war between world powers vis-à-vis -vis Ukraine. One senior intelligence official noted to TV7 that thus far deconfliction has remained intact. While Russia has robust capabilities stationed in Syria, ranging from electronic warfare systems to cyber warfare and advanced S-400 surface-to-air systems, among others, Moscow has remained committed to its guarantees by refraining from utilizing its highly advanced weaponry against Israel. Moreover, the Russian military has gone as far as to deny their Syrian hosts access to those systems. It is important to further highlight that while Israel's defense establishment is essentially opposed to providing Ukraine with military assistance over practical concerns regarding the Syrian theater, Jerusalem is proactively committed to support Kiev and the people of Ukraine. Earlier this morning, a number of trucks laden with Israeli humanitarian aid crossed the border of Poland into Ukraine. During a ceremony marking the transfer of the Israeli aid to Ukraine, Jerusalem's emissaries thanked the Polish government for allowing the Jewish state to utilize its territory for the purpose of assisting Ukraine at the behest of the government in Kiev. This is very important for us, the uh, ability to assist the people of Ukraine in this uh, difficult hour. We thank you very much for your uh, cooperation and I know that we will be able to work with you also in the future to the benefit of the people of Ukraine. And I'm happy that we can deliver this, these packages that uh, according to, to the needs of the Ukrainian people as given to us by the Ukrainian government, we are here, we are supportive and we will provide assistance also in the future. Turning to Cyprus, where Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog made a first official visit to Nicosia earlier this week, since assuming his post as Israel's head of state. His visit, which included a prior trip to Greece at the beginning of this week, was reportedly made as part of an effort to alleviate concerns in both Athens and Nicosia regarding possible rapprochement between Jerusalem and Ankara ahead of President Herzog's scheduled state visit to Turkey next week. Speaking alongside his Cypriot counterpart Nikos Anastasiadis, President Herzog stressed the necessity for collaboration with all regional actors at a time when a tragedy is seemingly unfolding in Ukraine. The conflict, which you mentioned correctly, which is unfolding in front of our eyes so tragically, is a reminder of the necessity of working together to protect our dearest values, principles, and interests. And it is exactly my message in Turkey next week, as I believe in collaboration between peoples and all faiths for the well-being of humanity. It is during these times of hardship and turmoil that we must stand together and reaffirm our long-standing and historic alliances. President Herzog continued by highlighting his counterpart's role in bolstering the Israel-Greece-Cyprus alliance, which he emphasized has become an anchor of stability for the East Mediterranean region. Thank you for watching us. 
As part of TV7 Israel's daily prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you once more to persist with prayer for the situation revolving Russia and Ukraine, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shabbat Shalom Mevorach, and we will see you again on Monday at the same time. friends, Steve Benoon here with Israeli News Live. Very difficult broadcast I want to share with you today. The situation in Ukraine. Uh, why is Ukraine being taken down? It is strategic. It is, it is for a global agenda, a new world order, and it has far more reaching implications than you could ever imagine. Oddly enough, what, we're, what you're going to find out today, and I know this may sound conspiratorial to get into this, but taking down Ukraine, causing this war, provoking Russia into a war, has a lot to do with even Planet X, believe it or not. It has to do with the Sphinx of Egypt. It has to do with getting the economy collapsed in Egypt uh, so that the United States, Israel, etc., can overtake that nation. We're going to go all the way back to when Obama was in power, the Arab Spring, the Arab Spring was actually supposed to bring this, uh, bring Egypt down to where they could get control of the country because of Planet X coming. Now, those of you that follow us over on Patreon, Israeli News Live on Patreon, there, I have shared inside information about the Sphinx, what's in the Sphinx, things like that, why that's so critical. But today we're going to go into it in the news because it is imperative. Uh, going to be getting into a lot of issues here. The economy collapse as a result of Egypt, all because of Ukraine. I can, I've been putting pieces together from intel that I've been given now over, over several months, and now it's all coming together. This video right here on your screen, Putin foiled NATO plan to take Donetsk and Luhansk. I think on YouTube it was titled initially, uh, Putin foiled NATO plan to, to take Donbass. Uh, that was our 30-second clip. It's still here on iConnect. It's on IsraeliNewsLive.org. Um, and by the way, speaking of IsraeliNewsLive.org, yeah, you can always see those type videos. That, that anything that comes up on iConnect, uh, iConnect will show up here. And uh, uh, so let's get right back into this. So we're going to be going into that. We're going to be going into Israel's involvement, how Israel wants Ukraine for them for themselves it's basically going to be israel part two our second homeland for israel they need to control that area for their own food supply in the future not to mention every leader with the exception of netanyahu and maybe naftali bennett that has been prime ministers of israel are all ukrainian descent most people don't even know that wow that must have something to do with the khazars of ukraine right they say they're jews but they're really not they're elitist I wonder why there was so much killing of real Jewish people in the Holocaust. Yeah, the real Jewish people were being killed and they were being sacrificed on the altar of New World Order. You got to remember, Adolf Hitler had a lot of elite Jews in his cabinet. Just like Zelensky, right? Zelensky, you know, let me put up some, I ran across this. I thought it was kind of cute. So I'm going to let it play here. While we're, while we're talking about Zelensky, right? Um, and let me just make sure the volume's turned off of this here. This is kind of like a little uh, a little uh, meme, you might say, they put together to make Zelensky uh, about him nervous. But you got to remember, Putin also plays part of that plan. I hate to say it, but he does. Uh, knowingly or unknowingly, it doesn't matter. The thing is, they're all together, working together. But Zelensky... Of course, he is Jewish, and they say, "Oh, Jews can never be could never be a part of a neo-Nazi fascist government." Oh yeah, they can. Oh yeah, they can. And uh, I'm going to introduce you in just a moment here to a uh, a a political scientist from Russia that actually shares that. Before I get into the other issues here, uh, Miss Sazanova. Um, in this article right here, Sazanova refuted the West's argument that Nazism is impossible in a Jewish-led country. She states here, in the West, the statement was once again made that in a state whose president is a Jew, meaning the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, uh, 
Nazism cannot exist in principle, but who came up with the idea that Nazism is connected specifically with the Jews? International lawyer, political scientist Kira Sazanova asked, she recalled that the uh, essence of Nazism is the idea of superiority of one human community over another. The authorities can declare not only ethnic or racial superiority, but also linguistic and religious national. All right, dropping down. As for Ukraine, the superiority of Ukraine speakers over Russian speakers is postulated there in terms of manifestation of this superiority. There is no difference, she believes. Not only that, I've shared with you already. I mean, I have uh, a friend of mine. He owns a company over in Ukraine, and he has shared with me it is illegal now. The Ukrainian government made it, made it illegal for you to speak Russian. Yeah. Talk about fascism. You can't speak Russian in the country. I don't think the people of Donbass really care about what they think about that, but that's superiority. That's neo-Nazism. According to Sazanova, it is not only the fact that the authorities allow insults against the quote-unquote damn Miskovites, cat saps, and quilted jackets. That is scary. And not only the sanctioning of parades with portraits of Bandera, which Bandera was nothing but their little fascist uh, uh, man there that they decided to honor after they overthrow Yanukovych. Uh, and not only the sanction of the praise with the portraits of Bandera and cries of glory to Ukraine, glory to heroes, which are rather accompanying the uh, para paraphernalia. The worst thing is, is when they torture, beat, mod, uh, mock, subject to martyrdom, those people who are no different from them. And they experience pleasure, joy, jubilation from this, she writes. Well, you know, I was actually sent sent to me from a good friend of mine over in Israel um, a video he got from CIA, uh, former CIA agent, that shared the crucifixion of a Russian soldier, and you see the guy being nailed to a cross, cross put into uh, the ground, and then they burn the man alive. That was Ukrainian soldiers that did this. Now, was it really Ukrainians or, 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 or maybe somebody else? I mean, the propaganda that I've seen coming out of Ukraine is unbelievable. But this lady here, this political scientist right here, Miss uh, Kira Sazanova, very interesting. Another point that was brought out here, Francis uh, Scar posted this on Twitter, uh, says uh, more mental gymnastics, uh, Verma, was it now from Pundit, Kira Sazanova. Um, the, author the Russian authorities and armed forces have found themselves in a difficult situation precisely because they have the best intentions because of their desire to place humanitarian above military objectives. Now, I don't know, I guess uh, maybe he's just mocking what she's saying, but the fact is what she says there is very true. The propaganda will not show you that. You, you want to get beyond the propaganda Go listen to Russell Bentley, and if and if you and if you can't, Russell just got a strike on YouTube because he's telling the truth, right? So if you can't listen to what Russell Bentley has to say on YouTube, or, well, you can still see his channel because his channel's not taken down. He's just got a strike on there, but uh, Russell Bentley clearly will tell you what's going on. They put that strike on him because they don't want the truth coming out of Ukraine. Louis, today is March 4th, 2022, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. Before I start, guys, give this video a big thumbs up and share this video. We got some breaking news updates when it comes to rumors of wars. Guys, the sleeping giants are trying to come in and bring their warships. They try to come in, but the problem here is that Turkey closed the strait meaning that uh, the sleeping giants can bring in their warships, certain parts in the Black Sea, right? So this is what's going on, is that uh, the sleeping giant are trying to bring a lot of stuff in, and I do believe their tanks might come in through Romania, but these warships cannot come in uh, through the strait. Uh, I think it's the Black Sea, if I'm not mistaken, guys. So... Give me a second. Let me just show you this one right here. All right. So the sleeping giant tanks on Romania 
Moldovan border. So they're trying to bring their stuff in, guys. That's what's going on here. The Sleeping Giants is uh, prepared to come in. And remember, guys, the bear leader has warned that if anyone gets involved, there's going to be huge problems. There's going to be a huge problem. That's why you have the bear with the nukes on high alert. You also have the sleeping giant uh, certain stuff on heightened alert. You guys seen the video I posted yesterday about them. Uh, the K-6 Mercury uh, plane aircraft that's patrolling within our land. Uh, so so things are uh, tensions are rising and uh, situation got a lot worse since last night. Uh, nuclear plant that was impacted. Uh, and by the way, guys, there's no radiation going on and stuff like that. Uh, I got the updates. So everything seems like it's okay. But once again, the sleeping giant is going to get involved in these type of stuff. But uh, they are closed. They are basically uh, not allowed into the Black Sea from what I'm hearing. But we also have some more breaking news updates. This is huge. The bear returns to the gold standard for its currency. Guys, this means that their currency will be backed up by gold. Now, remember, I kept talking about this this last couple of weeks, that the bear has stockpiled on gold. Now, you tell me if the sleeping giant uh, have gold. Uh, you guys already know that uh, certain areas... Uh, within the sleeping giant what's that area called uh the one that they have all them golds oh man i forget the name of the area but uh fort knox right fort knox is completely empty the sleeping giant don't have that gold they don't have nothing backing up their currency so the sleeping giant is going to be in a huge huge event see the bears playing good game of chess check this out so the bear returns to gold standard, the gov to remove VAT tax um, bullion. This will be, excuse me, this bill will be submitted to the State Duma on March 4th, today, March the 4th. And in other words, they basically, um, they basically hurt the sleeping giant currency now this is really powerful guys i would uh talk about this and uh sleeping giant currency would not outbeat this one here because again the bear currency is now being backed by gold before i start guys give this video big thumbs up this is dapu seven we have word out of new orleans that there is the potential for an underwater city to be sitting there some 50 miles off the coast of St. Bernard in the region of New Orleans. Now they're saying that amateur archaeologists, fishermen, all these people that have been in the area are all saying the same thing, that something weird is happening out here. And they believe that this is a city that dates back to 12,000 years ago. They're stating that this region is showing proof of having buildings on the site. And if this is true, then this could date back to 12,000 years ago when that region had dry land instead of the water that you see now in the Gulf of Mexico. So this is right around an area called the Chandelier Islands, out in the Gulf of Mexico, east of New Orleans, where these granite slabs and rocks have been discovered. One thing is for certain, there is something there. Without a doubt, there's something there. Now the argument is, how did it get there? The granite itself is not found in Louisiana. It's not found in Mississippi. It would have had to have been brought in from afar and a whole lot of it. One man has been studying this spot for 50 years. They've done dives down here. They've pulled pieces up. And what he pulls up shows you it is man-made. The structure that he has in his hands right there is a man-made artifact. There are a lot more of these pieces in this area. He also states that there is a pyramid-shaped object that is underwater. It's 200, about 280 foot tall. And then it's there. And when they go over top of it, 
The compass goes out on the boats. All the instruments go out in their boats. These are facts that fishermen, they're on film. I'll leave a link here so you guys can watch the news broadcast out of New Orleans talking about this. You can see the interviews with these people and see that this is very real. There looks to be something very ancient off the coast. And I'm going to tell you, it's probably not alone. There's probably others all up around Florida, up the east coast of the United States. Matter of fact, off the coast of the Carolinas. I can almost guarantee you there's something ancient there when you go looking. Just from the way the land looks and goes out into the water. Nonetheless, this is an interesting find. Here down in the Gulf of Mexico. Maybe if you're down there, want to do an expedition. Be something fun to look into. No doubt there are thousands of these granite rocks sitting down there and there's no solid explanation yet so as i get more info on this i'll keep you updated make sure to follow me on twitter for live updates and ladies and gentlemen today is march 4th 2022 it is 2 p.m central here in the usa god bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world folks please subscribe give us a thumbs up Ring that bell for critical future updates. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have just been told, and JPL has just announced, that they found yet another near-Earth object, another meteor inbound for, you guessed it, tonight. And they just saw it, and the solution date will probably be today. We will find out together. Because of the timing, I wanted to push this out. This is 2022 EF1. It's supposed to fly between the moon and Earth. They say 0.7 lunar distances. It's a very fast meteor traveling at 11.5 kilometers per second. And again, it was just spotted. You'll see that it has almost uh, the exact orbit with no inclination whatsoever as we do something i hardly ever see how could we have not seen this before it's going to be awful close let's get some data but before we do that let's watch us collide with 2022 ef1 an ef1 watch whoa <clears throat> and please notice the date so 25th, 26th, they still haven't seen it, 27th, 28th, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, bang. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get some detailed information. All right, 2022 EF1, 2022 EF1, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Solution date, March 3rd, so they're saying that it was late yesterday when they actually announced it. Uh, I surely look all day long and didn't see it announced. They said that they first saw it on March 2nd, actually solved it on March 3rd, but it still has a condition code of 7, meaning they're highly uncertain about its size and orbit. Strange, folks. Strange. How many observations? 42 over only one day. You think that they'd be able to actually, well, come up with a better condition code. And I want y'all to know that zero is a very good code, meaning they are highly certain of where this rock is headed. And, well, nine being highly uncertain, seven almost, well, very high on the curve. This luckily rock is only about 20 feet in diameter. That is the good news. It is moving fast. It would depend on the inclination that it entered our atmosphere, but I would expect it to blow up in the atmosphere. God bless you and yours, folks. Another day, another near-Earth object. Please share. Please subscribe. Always remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World. Okay, guys, I just want to say one thing. I forgot to put up my science, uh, science. <laughs> I forgot to put up my uh, <clears throat> weather report, and I definitely want to do that real quick. 
and uh, because we got a lot going on with weather, hey, good morning to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and let everybody talk Mark about the weather a little bit. Ram. Plus, yay, it's Friday. <laughs> now we have two systems coming. We'll bring freezing rain and some major snowfall. The second system bringing some snowfall as well and some possible flooding. But we have severe weather that has raised up for three days. So we'll go through the impacts, walk you through it a little bit on timing, so you know what to expect out of these tornadoes. If you've never been here before, hello, my name is Mark. I do upload every single day all year long, just not Friday from sundown to sundown Saturday. That is Sabbath. But I will make sure you're covered on whatever weather we do have. Now make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit that bell so you know when my videos do come out. Now guys, I need y'all to share this video today or at least hit that like button, get the YouTube algorithm going, because we need to share this information to everybody. We have a lot of chances for tornadoes, and it's a three-day event that we have with severe weather. So thank you for your support. God bless every single one of you. Links are always in the description to help save you time. Now let me walk you through this. Tomorrow we do have thunderstorms and all this green. We have the marginal risk and the slight risk for severe weather, and it is for tornadoes, guys. We have a 2% in this green, 5% in this brown, and they are expecting some wind and some hail with this. Now the wind will be 40 and growing towards 50 miles per hour wind gusts as it moves towards Illinois and Wisconsin. Now for your tornado threat, tomorrow going into Sunday, here's your cities and your states in the impacts, with the biggest impacts being for Omaha, Nebraska, Des Moines, Iowa, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Rochester, Minnesota, and Waterloo, Iowa. Now Sunday going into Monday, you will have thunderstorms all in all this green, and you will have marginal and a slight risk for severe weather. And this will be for a chance for tornadoes again. And this will carry even further to the south and east but for Sunday going into Monday, you have a big 5% area right here in this brown and a 15% area in this yellow. And here's your cities and your states impacted by severe weather for Sunday going into Monday. With your biggest being Memphis, Tennessee, Little Rock, Arkansas, Fort Smith, Arkansas, Fayetteville, Arkansas, and North Little Rock, Arkansas. Then as we go Monday into Tuesday, this is going to move a little further south and a little further east with your severe weather with a 15% chance still. And here's your cities and your states impacted by severe weather for Monday going into Tuesday. Memphis, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, Birmingham, Alabama, Jackson, Mississippi, and Huntsville, Alabama. Now this system is moving all across the Southwest all day today, all day tonight. And then once it gets into tomorrow, then we're gonna start getting our severe weather event. We're gonna start having some precipitation, some freezing rain, and there will be snowfall on top of that freezing rain with some sleet as well. But once you get into about 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, you're going to get a surface low buildup. This is pulling all this moisture up, and it is getting some dew points, some warm temperatures, a lot of convection, and you will have chances for tornadoes as this goes through tomorrow morning all through the afternoon, dropping heavy snowfall on the wraparound for South Dakota, North Dakota, and Nebraska, freezing rain and sleet as well as it goes through the whole afternoon. Now, once you get about 5 or 6 p.m. and get a little bit longer, you do still have the freezing rain, the sleet, and the snow dropping down. But now your thunderstorms are headed towards the north and east, and all your convection is right here on the lower half of Iowa, going down through Illinois, Missouri, and weakening down as you go through 7, 8, and especially 9 o'clock at night. 10 o'clock being done. You will have more thunderstorms, but the convection is gone until the next day while you're still getting all this freezing rain, all this sleet, and all this snow all night long. And as you start looking for your thunderstorms, you can see that not only the heavy snowfall that you're getting on this bad band, and you can see how it just twirls around with that heavy snowfall, freezing rain, and the sleet. Just dropping a lot of snowfall in that dark blue you see right there, but at the same time, once you start around 11 o'clock, these thunderstorms are going to start brewing up to some major thunderstorms, getting a lot of cells in them. And we do have shear in this area. We do have lift in this area. You get a nasty little band. I'll show you your winds as well. And as you go through the afternoon, then he's going to start splitting with a little squall line of thunderstorms going all the way from lower Iowa through Missouri. And this squall line that's going north and east, it is going to be thunderstorms, but they don't have the convection to create the lift for the tornadoes. But as this band goes south and this band goes north, the one that goes south does still have some shear, does still have some convection all the way to 8 and 9 o'clock at night. Once it hits 10, it starts weakening down and it goes to just regular thunderstorms. It loses its potency, loses its lift, and you just have rain. And if you look at your shear, you can see you do get some thunderstorms. They are weak. There's not a lot of convection yet. 
in that area all morning long. Once you hit around 11 o'clock, then you get these cells that's passing by with some shear. And it does get a squall line going right around noon to 4 o'clock. Now, these thunderstorms are still tracking east and north. And these will separate and go north. And this line right here going south and east will have some convection with it. It is following some strong dew points. Now, as this squall line stretches out all across northern Missouri, across eastern Kansas all afternoon long, it will go all the way to 7, 8, even 9 o'clock with chances for tornadoes as you're getting these winds coming through it as well. But once you hit 10 o'clock, then it starts weakening down, last chance for the convection, and it's just going to be regular thunderstorms passing through. You can see how the thunderstorms have milded down very greatly. So your biggest threat was all the way from 11 o'clock in the morning all the way until it comes down Missouri for 8, 9 o'clock at night. By 10 o'clock, it's his last chance, very weak cape at that point, and it's just regular thunderstorms that's going across the Ohio Valley. And as you look at your temperatures, you can see it does raise up 50, high 50 degree temperatures, and this will give you a lot of dew points as well. The dew points are just the particulates in the atmosphere, giving you a lot of precipitation, a lot of moisture clustered together to give you these thunderstorms. And you see it does get high 50s, even the low 60s, all the way to 8 o'clock in the morning, but once it hits 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock, you get a lot of heat all the way from southeast Nebraska, and it goes all across Missouri, Ohio Valley. I mean, you got temperatures all the way up to the Ohio Valley in the 60s, but, but by 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock, you started getting some 60 degree temperatures, which raise up your dew points as well for southeast Nebraska, and it does carry across southern Iowa. Now, it's in the high 50s, but you do have some cape in that area, some convective activity. It gives you lift as you go through the evening. And then once you go through the night, then it's going to be following this front line going down Missouri all the way to 6, 7, 8 o'clock. And once you hit 10 o'clock, then it's going to leave with your convection. I'll show you. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop there. Um, all these links are in the description box. I know I want to go back and looking at, finish looking at Stephen Noon report. But I'm going to go over here now and do missions, and we're going to get into the Bible, Psalms 10. We're already here at 47 minutes, so that's good. I probably won't be here no longer than an hour today. So let me go on over and get to missions and get to the Bible. My husband will be joining me. So uh, let's go ahead and do that now. Um... See if I could find
kweshika tu amen eh amen kama ume msijali tukitukenda supermarket kuna tunamwambia kafunga kabisa funga 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> bado watu wawili watatu wanne watano na hizo biblia msome msiende kuweka nyumba so in salvation abidi msome neno la Mungu haleluya amen All right, guys, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I'm so happy for the missions around the world. I thank you for all your support and prayers. Uh, we're gonna go on over here now to the Bible. Um, and then also, when I get through reading the Bible, I'll show you some guys, some show you some other material I want you to look at, but I won't show it to you later. So Father, we come in, in your word today. Uh, it's funny, you gave me this last night. Uh, and I ask that your Holy Spirit will be with us as we read your word, that your Holy Spirit cover us, be with the people watching, helping us to know that we're in the end, at the end. And you know, it seems like sometimes you are hiding from us, but you are not hiding from us. We are hiding from you. Uh, it's time for us to really come to you and give all our heart, mind, and soul. And we just ask that you help us to really stick closer to you than anything, Father. It's time for us to really know that the time is short. And so we thank you for your word today. We're asking that you help the people receive it. In the name of Yeshua Messiah, Haya. Thank you so much. So we go into Psalm 10, a very simple psalm, but a lot of power, a lot of powerful messages is there. So I'm going to let my husband read it to you, and I will talk to you guys later about something else I want to show you, okay? <clears throat> Why, Yahuwah, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? <laughs> because of their arrogance, wicked people chase the oppressed. <laughs> But please let the wicked be trapped by their own schemes that they have devised. Right. <laughs> For the wicked person boasts of his deepest desires. He blesses the greedy and insults Yahuwah. <laughs> the wicked man has a raised face. He does not seek the Almighty. He never thinks about the Almighty because he does not care at all about him. <laughs> he is secure at all times, but your righteous decrees are too high for him. He snorts at all his enemies. He says in his heart, I will never fail. Throughout all generations, I will not meet adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceptive, harmful words. His tongue injures and destroys. He waits in ambush near the villages. In the secret places, he murders the innocent. His eyes look for some helpless victim. He lurks in secret like a lion in the thicket. He lies in wait to catch the oppressed. He catches the oppressed when he pulls in his net. Hmm. His victims are crushed and beaten down. They fall into his strong nets. He says in his heart, the Almighty has forgotten. He covers his face. He will not bother to look. Arise, Yahuwah. Lift up your hand, Almighty. Do not forget the oppressed. <laughs> Why does the wicked man reject the Almighty and say in his heart, you will not hold me accountable? You have taken notice, for you always see the one who inflicts the misery and sorrow. The helpless entrusts himself to you. You rescue the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and evil man. 
Make him account for his evil deeds, which he thought you would not discover. Yahuwah is king forever and ever. The ethno-linguistic nations are driven out of his land. Yahuwah, you have heard the needs of the oppressed. You strengthen their heart. You listen to their prayer. You defend the fatherless and the oppressed so that no man on the earth will cause terror again. That's right. So Amen. with all the troubles going on around us right now, in families, out of families, on jobs, people homeless in cars, sleeping in cars and trucks and on the bridges and wherever they can get a place to lay their head and there's more trouble happening everywhere and everywhere and everywhere is happening and people, you know, they are distressing us because the rents are going up high, houses and mortgages are high, gas going up, food going up. We just got one thing after another people. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, go on and end this video here soon. I think I had another thing I want to show you guys. I want to show you guys an uh, announcement here. And I just want to show you guys this book. I, uh, I think you guys should try to see about this book. Uh, this one here I told you about, Pigs in the Parlor, that I've had on my shelf for many years. Very wonderful book about uh, practical guide to deliverance and prayers and prayers and uh, prayers that, route. that route demons, prayers for defeating demons and overthrowing the power of darkness. A very reasonable book. It's not about seven dollars, eight dollars, something like that. You can go here to Christian Book, uh, where I get a lot of my materials from, ChristianBook.com, and order it, people. So uh, I had somebody read. I think somebody wrote me this morning and said, "Oh, I got that book. I got to get it down off the shelf." Well, yeah, you need to get it down off the shelf and start using it because we're going to be having a lot of things go on and these demonic spirits and fallen angels and all these things occurring and you're going to have to keep your household full anoint your home anoint your car and just really be aware of these things that's coming at us right now uh i guess you have an announcement before we get to maranatha in the end we're in with maranatha here so you have something you want to say? Um, I just want to let everybody know Rick Myers from eSword has finally, <laughs> finally, after all these years, <laughs> got eSword developed for Android. You can now mm -hmm. go to the Google Play Store and download eSword for Android and install mm -hmm. all your modules that you have collected for eSword. It's you know eSword's free. I think it costs a buck ninety nine on Android. It probably costs a little bit to get it off of the Apple App Store too. Mm -hmm. But it costs a little bit to get them off these Play Stores these app stores but it's the same program smooth it works well and you can see a little sample of it there but um that's just an announcement he's been working diligently for decades on this program and what else do you want do you have maranatha here somewhere i don't see I have, there it is. hold on okay. a minute oh. i might be maranatha i hope i didn't forget something else seems like i'm forgetting something <laughs> We forget a lot at uh, our age, folks. A lot. You know, this is the... Wow, look at that, how that went away from me. <laughs> Things just go away from me. I See, it went away from me. So it's something about the turning point. I will put it in the description box, people. It just went away from me. That's what I mean. I went to show it and I forgot it and it went away from me. So um, I'm going to put it in the description box. It's talking about the turning point of all the things going up, food and gas and all these things. So I will put it in the description box. I think it's coming from BP Earthwatch. So so let me go ahead and get on over to Maranatha and I will put it in the description box. I'm sorry about that. Which one would you uh, Troublesome times rat upon us. Troublesome that times one? rat upon us, yes. I have to mute it out though. Gee whiz, I can't get that to slide right. All right. How do you do that right here? Yeah. Right there? Yeah. June 16, troublous times right upon us. After these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Revelation 7, 1. Four mighty angels are still holding the four winds of the earth. Terrible destruction is forbidden to come in full. The winds will be the stirring up of the nations to one deadly combat. While the angels hold the four winds, forbidding the terrible power of Satan to be exercised in its fury until the servants of God are sealed in their foreheads. 
The signs of the times give evidence that the judgments of heaven are being poured out, that the day of the Lord is at hand. The daily papers are full of indications of an intense conflict in the future. Bold robberies are of frequent occurrence. Strikes are common. Thefts and murders are committed on every hand. Men possessed by demons are taking the lives of men, women, and little children. All these things testify that the Lord's coming is near. The restraining Spirit of God is even now being withdrawn from the world. Hurricanes, storms, tempests, disasters by sea and by land follow one another in quick succession. The signs thickening around us telling of the near approach of the Son of God are attributed to any other than the true cause. The time is right upon us when there will be sorrow in the world that no human bomb can heal. Even before the last great destruction comes upon the world, the flattering monuments of man's greatness will be crumbled in the dust. God's retributive judgments will fall on those who in the face of great light have continued in sin. Costly buildings, supposed to be fireproof, are erected. But as Sodom perished in the flames of God's vengeance, so will these proud structures become ashes. I have seen vessels which cost immense sums of money, wrestling with the mighty ocean, seeking to breast the angry billows. But with all their treasures of gold and silver, and with all their human freight, they sank into a watery grave. But amid the tumult of excitement, with confusion in every place, there is a work to be done for God in the world. Yep, we got to keep working. Got to keep working, people. I'm going to go ahead and close the video out. Um, and uh, we really appreciate you guys coming to watch and praying for us and be praying for you. And like I say, so many things are happening all over the world. So many things are going on. I want to thank you for all the offerings to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, and those in need of mission fields. May Yahuwah richly bless each and every one of you. Uh, donation options are Tidely app, cash app, bump card. Donation options at our website, <coughs> fmcmi.org. Uh, Marner.com at gmail.com at PayPal. Mail in your donations to Fill My Cup Ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. Chip and address, Fill My Cup Ministries, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. So uh, I will go ahead and uh, let you guys know that if you haven't given your life to Messiah Yeshua today, you need to give your life to him. It's time to get on board. Time is running out, people. What can I say? The world has lost Yeshua because he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And we have forgotten his commandments. We don't even try to keep his commandments or obey him in any way uh as we say in here uh, daniel have told us all these things coming before the second coming of christ we need to get ready get ready american's moral foundation is like i said the ten commandments been broken and the sabbath is being part of the commandments the fourth commandment we don't want to respect him we want to honor sunday the first day of the week uh but it's time to get ready and praise your god the one that have made you made all living things uh, the world is in a tense, tense, tense mode right now. All over the world is in chaos and trouble. Uh, it's time to really reach out. We was out to the homeless people uh, this week. Um, we went there this week, I think, what day it was now? Monday. Monday, okay. Uh, and so we always considering helping the homeless. Uh, please help the homeless in your area. Uh, we know this couple here, uh, God bless them with a vehicle. They have a vehicle now. And she got a job uh, not too far away from the campsite. Uh, so I was really proud of her. She's working at a, a salon or somewhere, I don't know. But uh, just keep praying for the homeless because, uh, you know, you never know when we may be homeless. You just never know because the way it's looking, a lot of people are becoming homeless. And it doesn't mean they have to have a, a depression, a mental, Ill, mil, mental illness or any of those things. It just means that they lost their job. Uh, they lost their home, they, you know, they got thrown out, they got evicted, whatever. We need to be praying for one another, helping one another in these hard times. So I'm going to go ahead and let you in with prayer if you'd like to do that. I'll put my prayer thing up. Uh, I'll just put this up for now. 
Heavenly Father, we do thank you for everyone who gets to view the video. Father, we thank you for all our, our helpers, our contributors, mm -hmm. all the workers you have all mm -hmm. over the planet, Father. Mm -hmm. Thank you for protecting us. Boy, mm -hmm. we look forward to the end, finishing up, the wrap-up, yes. Father. Yes. Bringing this world to an end. It's old, it's tired, it's worn <laughs> out. Mankind, humans have mm -hmm. uh, run their race, and most mm -hmm. of them are falling off the track. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we just ask you to help us stay on this the straight, the narrow, mm -hmm. your path, Father, yes. your highway. Mm -hmm. Help us to follow you mm -hmm. and do what you want us to do till the very end, till Yeshua shows up. <laughs> we bless you and thank you in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Guys, I uh, will come back with another video as soon as I can. Continue praying for each other. Praying for us. We pray for you. Read your Bible day and night. Don't put it off, people. We don't know when we can have the bombs hit. Uh, whatever can happen can happen uh, Russia China. I don't know. We just need to be ready be ready be ready Keep our souls before Yeshua every night every day as Betty Stevens like to say we need to renew ourselves in him daily Dying daily before our father Making sure our sins won't find us out. So I'm gonna go now and you guys have a wonderful wonderful Shabbat uh, Have a wonderful wonderful Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. I love you guys so much. So I'll see you guys on another video. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Bye-bye. More links in the description box. Okay.